One thing that I keep seeing online is people saying that they don't know how in the world Nintendo is going to top The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. How these worlds and characters have come together to be some of the most ambitious things we've ever seen from the series. And people just keep asking that question, how are they going to top this? And I don't really see this being a big question for me. Because I feel like there's so many things that they can do with this new style. That they just started this open world format and there's just so much things they can do to make this 10 times better and even feed some of that classic audience. So today, it's my job to kind of decide what this next Zelda game is going to be and what it's going to look like. Now, last week I actually made a video discussing how a third Breath of the Wild game could actually potentially happen after Tears of the Kingdom. I really hope it doesn't, but yeah, I made a video on that you can check it out it'll be you know linked up above but today we are focusing on completely brand new building Hyrule from the ground up new engine new art style new link new Zelda new everything how would this next Zelda game look well I'm here to explain it for you today so the first thing I wanted to start off with is the world because that's the most important part the Hyrule that we are in or will we even be in Hyrule? Because we don't necessarily need to be there. We've had games that actually took place in different areas, such as Termina in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and Kahulan Island in The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. So there's a very good chance we should just get a completely new island, a completely new map to explore with new areas that doesn't really reference the traditional areas that we've seen in the Kingdom of Hyrule, such as Death Mountain, Zora's Domain, even Gerudo Desert, just changing things up completely I think would be a very good move. I mean, even giving us something like low rule compared to a regular high rule would be awesome. But just hearing the excuse of not wanting to do high rule again because we already have it in an open world, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, is just not a good excuse. That's like saying, why did Nintendo ever want to do high rule over and over again with some of the other mainline games? Like, why in the world did Ocarina of Time have a high rule and in Twilight Princess have the same high rule? They look completely different but they have similar locations, you know, the staples of the series. What makes the world of Zelda so awesome is that pretty much every single game, with a few exceptions, are new ones in the timeline, meaning years and years on, meaning they can do whatever they want with Hyrule, which is pretty cool. I mean, if they want to flood it again and make new locations and islands like a new version of Wind Waker, they can do that. That's the beautiful thing about the Zelda series, is they can be as creative with the art style and the characters as they want, which means we could actually have another Toon Link again, which is really cool. Please bring back Toon Link. I would love an open world version that's kind of reminiscent of Wind Waker. Next, let's talk about the gameplay. Aonuma and the Zelda team have already stated that they want to continue on with this open world format for Zelda, but it doesn't mean that they can't tweak it a lot from what they did with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. That means, yes, bring back proper dungeons to the story and tie it in as such. And I think there's two ways they can do this, and it definitely could work with an open world. I see people tell me all the time that this open world format just does not mesh well with dungeons. That's just not the case. There's actually two ways I think they could do this in a really good way. And the first is just to have them be linear. Who cares? Make a linear story with linear dungeons, and yeah, it's that simple. And everything else in the open world can just be explored when you collect certain items, you can collect certain extras like heart pieces and do certain side quests, and maybe some side quests are blocked until you get that item from that dungeon and progress further in the story. But the open world aspect is mostly for side quests and exploring and doing things outside of the main story. That's what it should be used for. And I felt like that's kind of what they did with like Twilight Princess is a great example, where I felt like there was a very linear direction as they where they wanted you to go and based on each region and which dungeon you had to do next. But the world had a lot of open areas that you could go explore and do side quests in. That's all they need to do. The second thing they could do is just have any dungeon be able to be completed in any order. It doesn't have to really be in a linear fashion, but here's how it would work. The item that you get within that dungeon will be the primary way to solve that dungeon. And that's how Zeldas have been for the most part. Like once you collect that item, everything in the dungeon revolves around it. Not too many dungeons revolved around specific weapons unless they were, you know, the basic ones, the arrows, the bombs, stuff like that. And maybe those are things that you give Link from the very beginning like they did with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. But for the most part, you do some basic things until you're able to defeat that mini boss, get that item, and that item only will be specific to that dungeon that you're completing. That way, when you complete it, you don't need to like do with them in specific orders or anything like that. You get that new item and you can use that item in the open world 
where you can do side quests with it and also find different treasures that you wouldn't be able to reach otherwise. But if we're going to have dungeons, we have to have proper mini bosses and bosses as well. The mini boss to drop the item for that dungeon and a really good boss for the final part of the dungeon. A boss that utilizes that item in a unique way to take them down, not just spamming a basic attack from one of your champion buddies. Yeah, the bosses in Tears of the Kingdom are not that great. I think that's not a secret. But I'm going to say something else about the overall gameplay that might resonate with some people. Some people might think it's a terrible idea. That's really up to you. But I think there should only be one sword. Yes, just the Master Sword. That's the main weapon that Link uses. I think they should just go back to the basics and just have Link use a leveled up Master Sword as he continues to his adventure. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, or maybe incorporate some type of new sword or something. I'm not really huge on the different types of weapons. I think I want to just kind of fight people with a Master Sword, but improve Link's skills along the way. Very much Hyrule Warriors style, and if you've actually played any of the Jedi Survivor or Fallen Order games, it's like a skill tree for Cal in order to level up his lightsaber skills and incorporate brand new combos and stuff with your swings, I think that would be an awesome thing for Link. Actually having fluid brand new combat that really makes you want to fight enemies instead of just doing this same attack by mashing Y over and over. And I would like combos that actually incorporate Link's items along with his sword as well. Maybe you can use the boomerang for a cool combo or the hook shots once you collect them from a dungeon. The bow and arrow along those lines. I think that would be really cool and I think that's enough. I don't think we need different types of medium swords, broad swords, different types of spears and all that. I think just having the master sword would already eliminate the weapon durability problem that a lot of people have. But also make the combat more fluid by focusing on the master sword alone. Could you imagine, once again, I'm using the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Survivor as an example. If you could use your shield as like an instant parry and you had to block at the exact times and actually use that in combination with your sword and really give off that feeling of a powerful knight warrior that Link is, I think that would be really good. Just definitely needs to improve the combat. Now, as far as story goes, I think Zelda games probably have some of the most story out of any of Nintendo's IPs outside of like Fire Emblem and Xenoblade probably. So yeah, and even with that, it's never anything super deep. To me, my favorite story from any Zelda game was definitely Skyward Sword, which told the entire timeline of how it started and kind of the very first incarnation of Link, Zelda, and even Ganondorf being Demise. So I really did like that story, but I also wouldn't mind them telling a new one with a new villain like they did with like Vati and even Yuga. So something new with a new villain in a new world, it's something that I'd definitely be down for. But also, I'd kind of be down if they just restarted the timeline, made a new one. Like, this is a new time period, this is a new timeline in an alternate universe that gives us a officially fresh, brand new timeline. So that way they can actually make this one make sense and not have it branch into multiple different weird paths and actually tell some really unique stories from here on out that ties into a cohesive timeline. I would really love that, considering the fact that this current timeline is a mess, but as far as story goes, I really don't have much to say here. For the most part, Nintendo does a good job telling story. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom don't have the greatest stories. Personally, I think Tears of the Kingdoms is miles better because Breath of the Wild really didn't push any narrative forward with all the lore and stuff. So thankfully, Tears of the Kingdom gave us some more lore. It's a little confusing as far as the timeline goes, but it's lore. So I really don't have much to say here for what they really need to do story-wise. Now under extras, this is just some last minute details and stuff for this future Zelda installment. So one thing I feel like they need to do is better reasons to explain explore the world. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom has a very vast world, with Tears of the Kingdom adding a second world underneath, which is pretty empty. Yeah, it's a gigantic map underneath Hyrule, with only a couple of chests that give you outfits that you've already collected in Breath of the Wild. I think this is one of the biggest issues with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, is the side quest and, you know, your exploration doesn't really lead to anything. It gives you a couple of outfits, maybe a weapon that's just going to break in a couple of hits, and that's about it. I want to really feel like exploring things gives you really unique 
things for your moveset. Maybe item power-ups that allow your items to do new things that it couldn't before, like allowing your boomerang to go further or do a new technique, maybe have fire elements to it or ice elements to it, which will also tie into allowing you to get into further places in the map. And maybe just rewarding the player with better things that really makes you want to go out and explore every inch of the map. Yes, the Korok seeds are there just to expand your inventory and Nintendo doesn't want you to collect them all, that's why there's an obsessive amount, but at the same time, I wish there was a really good reward for doing that because sometimes players really want to go out of their way and collect every little last thing there is to collect and still rewarding them with poop is not a great excuse. Something else I really want to see more of, and I'm sure the Zelda team is going to do it as they were really good with this in Breath of the Wild, is having non- side quest related things on the map, like just weird things that were really cool finds that we could make videos on and talk about and speculate. You know, the best type of story is story that's not told to you at all, but just with hints in the overworld, environmental elements that kind of tell a story and we get to predict ourselves what happened in each location and stuff. That stuff was always a lot of fun and I feel like in Tears of the Kingdom, it dramatically decreased from the unique things that we found in Breath of the Wild. So so just adding fun environmental elements that tell a story or have really cool Easter eggs or callbacks to certain things within the series or within the game is always appreciated and something that definitely should return. So just having good rewards and making the map filled with charm and reasons to explore every nook and cranny is somewhat of a must. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are extremely good Zelda games and some of the most fun I've had with a Nintendo game in a very, very long time. And the current formula that Aonuma and the Zelda team have come up with with this open world Zelda is so good. And I know a lot of people still want to see that format of the original Zelda return with the linear story and dungeons, so I still think there's things that they can do to tweak this just a little bit to keep the open world aspect but also give classic fans more of that classic feel that they've been wanting. So there's so much that they could actually do with a future Zelda installment, it's actually crazy that people still talk about how they can't even picture what's next when there's still so much the Zelda team can do. I'm sure they're already grinding and coming up with ideas for the next game as we speak. But let me know in the comments down below what you would like to see for the very next Zelda game. Do you want them to go even bigger? A smaller world? Do you want it to stay open world? Or do you want it to be more linear like the past Zelda games? Let me know down below. And stop for a second before you go. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things The Legend of Zelda and Nintendo in general. We are almost at our goal of 250,000 subscribers and you right now can make this happen. So just stop, take a second, leave a like and subscribe. It'll only take a couple of seconds. And thank you guys so much for your support. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. See you guys.